Hey guys, I'm Sir Pinkbeard, and in my previous Reviture video, I told you that if you had any questions, any at all, you could reach out through Discord, Twitter, or the YouTube comments on that video. And a lot of you did. And I noticed there were generally five topics that you wanted to know about. So I figured, let me do a video talking about those five things, because that's what people are asking the most about. So just like with the last video, if I don't answer a topic that you want to know about, let me know in the comments below and I'll see what I can do to get you a pretty solid answer quickly. That said, let's get into this. Okay, question number one. Should you work for Reviture? And I'm gonna combine that with, was it worth it overall? So should you work for Reviture and was it worth it? There are generally two camps of people. There are those that say never under any circumstance work for Reviture. And there are those that say, yeah, but treat it as a last resort. And I would say that I'm closer to this camp than this camp because Reviture is a viable option to enter the computer science industry. It is. It's not perfect. It's not the best. It's not the ideal. And they're paying under the table. And I know if you're watching this video, you've probably heard all the arguments for that. And if you watched my last video, you heard a lot of the reasons why people would just say no. But honestly, I think it's a good way into the industry. It is a coding boot camp but they pay you during training and they guarantee you a job, which is better than most other boot camps out there. Now, sure, you're not guaranteed a job at super industry standard rates. You're guaranteed a job at low Midwestern industry standards. Uh, 45,000 a year is their entrance fee. But, but if you're in a position where you need a job change or you just, can't get interviews, then Reviture is a great option. They'll give you the skills, they guarantee you a job, and then you'll have experience. And once you have experience, it's a lot easier to get jobs in the software industry. So if you just need to get your foot into the industry, definitely, definitely give Reviture a shot. That said, there are a few things where you don't want to do it. You don't want to go to Reviture if you can't afford three months of extremely low pay during training. You're only going to be making like $8.50 an hour. And you don't want to go to Reviture if you don't want to relocate. And you don't want to go to Reviture, and this is the big one, you don't want to go to Reviture if you have the time to learn those tech stacks and create your own projects by yourself. So I talked with a guy who wanted to go to Reviture or was thinking about going to Reviture, but he had time and there was no pressure for him to leave his parents' house because he had moved with, in with them after college. And so I basically told him, listen, dude, work on personal projects, pick a tech stack, grab some technologies, and then make three or four projects on your technologies. And then just say, you know those technologies really well, and that will get you a better situation in the industry. It'll give you a leg up on your resume, and then you know you just have to do your interviews. And then from there, it's kind of a numbers game. If, you, if you're not in a situation like that, then consider Reviture, because it's a real viable option, especially if you're in an industry that doesn't make as much as 45,000. I mean, I taught for four years, and I was only making 43,000, and or, like, that would have been my fifth year pay was $43,000 a year. I started at 39.5. So there wasn't a whole lot of upward movement and Reviture was like, we'll start you at 45 and after a year, we'll pay you 60. And I said, yeah, that sounds worth it to me. Sign me up because it would have taken me a lot longer to make $60,000 as a teacher. So, so yeah, I, and I think it was worth it overall, right? I came out of the Reviture training knowing a lot and I didn't realize how much I knew until very recently. So I've been working as a contractor for a company that I'm not going to mention for roughly six months now and at the bank where I'm contracted out to, I am one of the better developers there. But that's not because of me, that's because of what I learned at Reviture. I already knew C Sharp, I already knew Java, but because they were able to teach me really good Git practices and because they taught me front-end development with Angular and JavaScript and TypeScript, I've been a very versatile member of their team. And honestly, the guys who have been programming there for a long time have come to me asking questions about things related to the languages that we use, which is weird 
I'll admit, and that might say something more about them than it does about me, but I came out of Reviture understanding that like, oh, I knew how to program software really well. And they were able to teach me good practices that I could then implement. And so since then, I've been the one helping my company move towards those good practices. So I think, yeah, it was absolutely worth it. And I make more money now than I had ever in my life. So definitely worth it as far as I'm concerned. But there are some downsides, which brings me to question number two. All right, question number two, do you have to relocate anywhere? Yes. Uh, you do get to pick your relocation like for training. So they have a few different training locations and you get to say, I wanna go to Texas or Tampa or Virginia or New York, right? And they'll also let you pick your training start date. So if you say, hey, I'll be in Florida, you know, in June, can I start at the Tampa location on like June 6th? Well, they'll say, well, we don't necessarily have a training then, but how about a week later at that location, we have a training starting that we have spots for. So you can kind of pick your relocation to training, but after training, you, you don't get a choice. You have to be okay going anywhere in the United States for two years, with the exceptions of like Puerto Rico and Hawaii and Alaska. So anywhere in the continental United States for two years, they could potentially send you. Now that generally looks like the East Coast, the West Coast, and a couple of bigger cities in the Midwest. So if you're not one of the people that want to you know, relocate, or if you're not in a position where you can do that easily, then Revisher definitely don't, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that because you have to be willing, right? And so for me, I was from South Florida and during training, I sold my house and we lived close to our parents. So my wife moved in with our parents for the months while I was in training. We sold the, the house and then we just moved. We were in a position to move wherever we wanted. But I've interacted with some of you who said, yeah, I, I can't do that. I've got kids, I've got a wife, a house, a mortgage. I can't afford to take three months and go relocate somewhere for training, not make a lot of money and then move somewhere else in the US. That's just not something I could do and that's fair. That's fair, Reviture is primarily going after college students that don't have roots in the ground or in a community yet. So, you know, if you're a situation where you have those things, Reviture might not be your best option. Now, a couple of last notes on relocation. Uh, they do help you with relocation a little bit. So going to training, you're gonna get roughly $250 just to relocate to the training site. And then from there, they're gonna give you between 500 and $750 to relocate to your job after training. Now that's not a lot of money. And that's not a lot of money because they generally want you to relocate very quickly. So um, one of my batch mates, when he finally got out of, of staging and was headed off to contract, he had a week, he had like a week to get there. And so from South Florida, he went up to Georgia, saw his family, and then went to South California. And he had a week to do all of that. And there were other people that I met while I was in training that got hired and said, we'll see you on Monday. And it was Thursday. So they had three days to pack up their junk and move to a new location. And that's, that's really hard to do with only $750, right? Because you got to put down first last security on an apartment. If you have a car, you got to drive that distance. So, you know, it's not a lot of money just in general, but they do give you the option of taking out like a loan from your forward paychecks, like your, your future paychecks that you'll pay back over time. That's not a great option, but it's, it's an option. So that's basically everything you need to know about relocation. They can send you anywhere in the U S they're going to help you with it a little bit, but during training, you're going to definitely want to set some of that money aside for relocating after training. Which brings me to my third question of how does the pay work? Okay, so Reviture pay works in three stages, um, potentially, potentially three stages. The first stage is during training while you're in their training facility. So you're making something like $8.50 an hour for 40 hours a week. And they'll pay you that money, but because you're living in their training facility or the apartments that they rent out for their trainees, you're going to have to pay some of that money back. So I think even though, you know, you make a decent amount of money during those two weeks of training, every two weeks, I think I got something like $360 a paycheck 
just because they took out like utilities for every week and they took out uh, my portion of the rent for renting a room from them. Now, if you want to provide your own housing during training, they will absolutely allow you to do that and they won't take any money out of your paycheck. But generally, most people just elect to stay with them and they take the money out of the paycheck and it is what it is. So that's stage one. So stage one, you're getting paid, you're making $8.50 an hour, and they're taking money out of your paycheck to cover your rent and utilities. Stage two is when you enter something called virtual staging. Now, if you watched my last video, I did talk about staging a little bit, but uh, staging is this time between when you finish your training and before you get your contract. So you're just kind of sitting around and like practicing your skills and practicing interview questions and preparing for interviews that they're getting you for jobs. But once you've kind of been approved for a job and they've someone's hired you, they'll release you to something called virtual staging, which is where you can return home, still check in every day, make sure you're doing some type of work, but you're getting paid during virtual staging the 850 without the money coming out because you're, you have to leave their uh, apartments pretty quickly. So once you leave the apartment, they start paying you without taking out the rent or the utilities that they were providing for you. So you get a little bit of a paycheck boost, but it's not that much more money. So stage three is based off your offer letter start date. So if your offer letter start date says, hey, we're gonna start you on March 3rd. So on March 3rd, they're gonna start paying you your $45,000 a year because that's when they start billing the other company. Now, if they sell your contract right away, which they, they really like to do, then you'll start making more money uh, almost immediately. As soon as that offer letter start date comes in, your other company will pay you significantly more than $45,000 a year, and you'll start making significantly more money right off that start date. So that's like the best case scenario, but they generally like to sell your contract because they don't want to have to deal with the fact of like employing you. They just want to train you and then you know, send you off to someone else. So now that we've talked about the pay, the next question is, can I choose my specific training? And the answer to that is simply no. You get to pick your training location, your training start date, but you don't get to pick your training tech stack. You can kind of game that though, in that if you sign up with Reviture towards a normal graduation time, so December, uh, January to June, July, you're more likely to end up with a full Java tech stack or a full c .net tech stack. And if you go on the off season, which is not those months, then you're more likely to end up in something like Pega or Salesforce. But you can still during those times get a Java tech stack or a .net tech stack. It just kind of depends, but it's totally random. So you don't get any control over that whatsoever. That said, once you're in a training, I have heard that once you find out what your tech stack is, you can ask to uh, you know, see what other tech stacks are running around at the same time and see if you can switch. And they might do that on a case by case basis, but generally they just put you in a training and then you're in that training, no big, like you're stuck. And the final question, the one that's the most prevalent on people's mind, how do I avoid that $36,500 contract breakage fee? And that answer is very simple. Don't break the contract. <laughs> but there are, there are two ways that you can leave Reviture. And one is getting fired where you have to pay back that money. And the other is getting mutually released where you don't. So let's talk about how to not get fired. And then we'll talk about how to not get mutually released. If you don't want to get fired, don't do illegal things pretty much. That's that's basically it. You need to be able to pass a drug test because they send anyone anywhere with any company. So if you can't pass a federal government drug test, then, then you're not going to be a good fit. They will fire you for that. You will owe them money. And you don't want to do anything illegal. You have to be able to pass a background check. And if you can't pass a background check or something happens during training that would make you ineligible to pass a background check, they're gonna fire you because they can't sell you essentially because they can't make money off of you because you have an inability to pass a background check. So be open about uh, any illegal activity that has happened if you get in a like a DDI while you're in training, tell Reviture that. Um, they may choose to release you mutually and you won't have to pay back that money, but 
if you don't tell them and they run your background check at the end and it comes back that you can't pass it because of a DUI that you didn't tell them about, you're gonna get fired. So that was something they stressed a lot in training was like, don't do drugs, tell us if you commit a crime. <laughs> like, that's it. So it's pretty hard to get fired, but the only other way aside from illegal activities to get fired is if you just don't put in work. So there was a story about a dude who made it all the way through training but on the final project, the one right before they just approve everybody to go out and get jobs, uh, they had a final project and he didn't work on that project at all. He completely slacked off, he did absolutely nothing. And the other people that were working on the project trying to get it done were like, yo, trainer, this is unacceptable. And then that trainer found out and fired him on the spot. So he wasn't able to complete the training and he had to pay back the $36,500, which is not great. But as long as you do your best, they're not going to fire you. They don't wanna to have to come after you for that money. And you know, it's just, a, it's a hassle. So do your best, do your training, don't break the contract. If you don't get sold off to another company, stay with Reviture for two years and you'll be fine. You'll never have to pay that money back. But the other way to leave Reviture is through mutual release. And there were two people in my batch who got mutually released. The first was a very old lady who had no business being in a software development thing. She'd already had a career and you know, there was no there was actually no reason for her to actually do this job, but she wanted to, so she did. But she was so inept at technology that she had no code written for her first project. And our trainer basically walked us through our first project in class as he was going over the skills that we needed to have for that project. So there was like no excuse for not having anything done, but she just didn't have anything done and they let her go. And so she didn't have to pay any money back, but she didn't continue working for Reviture. And the second way to get mutual release that, that I personally witnessed was not passing QCs. Now in the last video, I talked about QCs as a essentially like a did you learn what you were supposed to learn type of weekly questionnaire situation. And as long as you do well, or you're learning and your trainer thinks you're learning and you're putting in effort, there's no amount of QCs that you can fail before they'll let you go. But if you're not putting in effort and you're failing QCs, then you can probably be fired and, and have to pay that money back. But there was a dude who put in a lot of work and like worked hard and he just didn't get it. He wasn't able to pass the QCs, his, he didn't ask questions in class or in training. And uh, in general, overall, his work wasn't very good because he just like couldn't communicate. He knew the stuff, but he just couldn't communicate. And he got real flustered during the QCs, so his communication was really bad. And they eventually just let him go. Now, he didn't have to pay the money back. He did his best, and they just said, we're not a good fit for each other, and they just let him go. Um, and then a week later, he got a job making $70,000 a year in New Jersey. So I think he won overall. I think he ultimately won, you know, Reviture best case scenario type of deal. But there, there you go. There's how to not get fired. Okay, so that's basically everything you guys have asked for. If you do have any other questions, let me know in the comments below. Otherwise, you have a, enough information now to make a really solid decision about Reviture. I'm Sir Pinkbeard. Thanks for watching and good luck.